The history of mankind is a continuous conflict that has been going on for more than three and a half millennia on planet Earth. In all this time, the Earth has been at peace for only 292 years, which roughly means that for every day of peace there are 12 days of war. As a result of such a long history of conflict, a huge number of lives have been lost. Why do people fight at all? This is a difficult question that we will try to answer in the next few minutes. In addition, we will think about what the world would be like if people did not have a stupid and insane desire to kill their own kind. It may seem sad, but very educational. Please stay tuned and try to answer the simple question of why people fight in the comments. And we will start with the fact that from the Merle side we are less developed than animals. For example, lions kill zebras, crocodiles eat fish, wolves hunt hares. However, none of them do it for fun. Animals simply seek to satisfy their food needs. National Geographic magazine says the right thing. The death of one animal means life for another. Lions may compete with cheetahs for more fertile habitats and even get into fights, but they won't go after cheetahs with the express purpose of killing them. This behavior is unique to humans. However, why is it so difficult for scientists to give a clear answer to this question? Psychologists who studied the animal world came closest to understanding this phenomenon. For example, Jane Goodall, a chimpanzee researcher, studied monkeys for a long time and came to the conclusion that they also wage wars. Primates, like humans, can kill for fun and have a special passion in such moments. Often in this context, cats are cited as an example, which kill mice not for food, but simply for fun. However, it is important to remember that cats are not sentient, and from the point of view of these free creatures, they are just playing with a free ball whether it is alive or not. But humans and other primates close to them deliberately kill other individuals. An analogy can be drawn between war and the consequences of high intelligence in these creatures, and to a certain extent this is justified. Various theorists such as Sigmund Freud, Hegel and Ollinen have tried to explain war in terms of aggression, the subconscious death wish, the laws of social development and class struggle. However, in our opinion, classical psychologists are approaching a more accurate answer. They argue that our brains are capable of compassion and empathy. People can share the pain of others and perceive killing as something that is justified and reasonable if they kill for an idea they believe in. However, targeted killing is absent in predators such as crocodiles, which lack such mental abilities. That's why we don't see situations where all the tigers in Africa gather to go kill tigers in Asia. It sounds logical enough, doesn't it? In the history of mankind since ancient times, it has been the prevailing notion that murder is a terrible sin, and it was subject to punishment even at the earliest stages of human history. For example, in ancient Greece, you would be executed for premeditated murder. However, there is a small exception, if the killings are committed in mass by large groups of people, they turned into acts of heroism, called military feats. This is how a funny paradox arises. Religion, social and political systems as a whole do not deny the need to sometimes fight for a just cause. Almost the entire human epic, from the ancient Greek myths about the Spartans to the brave American warriors in Iraq, is associated with the process of taking the life of other people. Humanity does not seem to have made any progress in this regard, since in ancient times those who killed another tribe, such as the Neanderthals, were considered heroes, and now, those who take lives are rewarded and honored. We do not deny that there are exceptions in certain situations that deserve the utmost praise and respect, such as the fight against terrorists and other enemies of humanity. However, such cases are only exceptions and have no connection with the millions of people who sent each other to the other world during the First and Second World Wars. The statistics are indeed terrifying, but their ambiguity leaves doubts. Various figures can be found in printed publications stating that three and a half billion people have died in wars in the history of mankind. However, it is worth noting that in 1804 alone, one billion people lived on Earth. 
Regardless, anything is possible. Research conducted by John Jack was Babel in 1959 showed that in 5,559 years, 14,500 warriors of various sizes occurred on the planet, but not all of them were destructive. For example, in 1896, Great Britain declared war on Zanzibar, which lasted only 38 minutes. The Queen's army quickly stormed the Sultan's palace and captured the ruler. On the other hand, Holland waged war with the Sile Archipelago for 335 years, and not a single person died. Such conflicts were also taken into account in the statistics, but it would be foolish to argue that the numbers are too inflated. Take, for example, the Second World War, which, according to the most conservative estimates, claimed 40 million lives. The history of such conflicts remains fresh in the memory of mankind, and if we delve into history and look at what happened in China, then our hair will stand on end, not only on our heads. In 1850, during the Qing Empire, the Chinese were at war with the colonialists who had taken over the country. The number of victims of this conflict ranges from 20 to 100 million. Earlier, when the Qing Empire itself seized power, another 25 million people died. The gigantic empire of Genghis Khan was not built out of the blue either. Capturing 24 million square kilometers, this empire lost 30 million lives, which was 7.5% of the world's population at that time. And pessimists claim that the warriors of the era of Genghis Khan claimed 60 million lives, which further increases the insane numbers. However, I do not want to delve into a more distant history, where even more terrible events took place. Many may justify the need for wars, but no one disputes their colossal sacrifices. And here it is worth raising the question, what would happen if the revolution changed our minds and excluded the need to fight? Pessimists immediately declared that the planet would face famine, overpopulation, and other problems. The position of the classical supporters of the war is explained by geopolitics, resources, and other factors. The problem is that all this was invented by the leaders, who always wanted to fight in order to expand their influence. They are ready to die on the battlefield, but scientific sources indicate that the Earth is able to feed from 4.5 to 20 billion people, which even now, at the peak of population, does not greatly exceed the limit. Now look at the news feed of any science group. Two years ago, it was proved that terrestrial potatoes can be grown even in Martian conditions. Bill Gates has invested in in vitro meat production, and companies like KFC are already piloting stores that will sell artificial meat products exclusively. It is also worth mentioning potential geniuses, such as Mendeleev and Einstein who could have revealed their genius if they had not died in military conflicts, for example, in the trenches under the English Channel. We do not claim that humanity would be better off without wars. We simply say that spending on science in all states is much less than spending on the army. If we were to reverse the numbers, cutting-edge technologies and renewable resources and artificial food could become commonplace. Thus, the question of food and resources would itself fall away, and the main argument of the lovers of war would also lose force. Do not forget that even in 2019, we still live in our caves and look with caution at the caves of other tribes. It's just that now the caves have been replaced by countries, and the spears by high-tech weapons that can take the lives of millions of people with one blow. We continue to improve the means of communication, food, and murder. Unfortunately, until humanity realizes that a simple janitor from Australia can be a copy of it and share all interests, we will spend billions on destructive means that have claimed the lives of many people. As a result, humanity will continue to stagnate. Until we meet again, friends.